are restored to life. Instantly restored in a body just like the one you're wearing, only it's young. Nothing missing, and it's perfect. About 20, not a little baby, just about 20 years of age, male or female. And there you marry to, as you marry here. And there you die. And you're just afraid of dying there, as you're afraid of dying here. And you're instantly restored. But there's a vast difference between restoration to life and resurrection. Resurrection is the beginning of the new age, an entirely different world, when you awake within the skull. So restoration is simply the continuance of the dream. This is the dream. You are dreaming what you are. You will dream yourself into your present situation, and you will dream yourself out of it. So you begin with a dream. What? A daydream. What's a daydream? A wish. Oh, I wish it were true. Isn't that a daydream? What would it be like if I were now the man that I would like to be? That's the daydream. But then dare to assume that you are it. That's the beginning of the dream of getting out of the present dream into that dream. But it's still a dream. And the day will come you have this experience that, that I'm speaking about where you awaken from the dream. It's the most peculiar thing. When it happened to me, here I am, in a strange room, in a hotel in San Francisco. Room 725. Here I am, a normal person, sleeping a normal, living a normal life. Went to bed in the same normal manner that I've done year after year, night after night to find myself waking. And I thought, I'm going to awake, if I do awake, as I've always done, and I didn't. It was entirely different waking. To awake within a sepulcher, and to know that I am sealed within my own skull. But what an alertness. You've never known such awakeness. So to awaken is to resurrect. That is what resurrection means. Not some little cemetery. You are now buried in the only tomb that you will ever be buried in. Put you in so-called holy ground? No. Forget all that nonsense. Cremate the body is only simply quickening the pace that's going to take place if you put yourself into the ground, for there you slowly decay, while the furnace will make it a quick process. But it's the same dust. Only you awake in this world just like this and you're restored to life and you fall in love and fall out of love and you marry and you go through all the battles that you do here there is no change whatsoever there is no transforming power in what the world calls death and you continue the dream that you have here and then you awake in your own skull and that is the resurrection that's when you begin to enter the new age called the kingdom of God it takes an entirely new body and that body is a body that you gave up as told you in Philippians he gave it up completely when he took upon himself the form of a slave and became obedient unto death even death upon the cross and finding himself in human form he surrendered completely to the form in which he found himself but he gave up all that was his and what was his? He was God. You were God. And you still are God. But now, you are fulfilling what you pledged yourself to do. To complete the dream. And not to awaken before the end. So no one's going to awaken you before the end because you are in control. And no power in the world can awaken you before the end. Because then your purpose would be void. And you are going to fulfill your purpose. Go right straight through to the very end. And then return to the being from whom you came. And who is that being? Yourself. You are the sender and the sent. So he who sees me, sees him who sent me. In the office of the saint, I am restricted. In the office of the sender, I am the Father. Unlimited power. Unlimited wisdom. So, 
He who sees me, says he, sees the Father. And because the same meaning of seeing and knowing is the same word, if you see me, really see me, then you know the Father. That's what he's telling you. The day you really see the Son, you know who you are. And you'll see that you are God the Father. This is the story of Scripture. The whole thing is completely given to us in the Old Testament. It's Adam rated. It's a foreshadowing in a not altogether conclusive or immediately evident way. But it's there. It's the blueprint. Prophetic blueprint. And when it comes into fulfillment in a living way, that's not what man expected. So they rejected it. He came unto his own, and his own rejected him. They received him not. And the world has taken the story and made a peculiar story out of it. There's the one little being called Jesus 2,000 years ago. That's not it. Jesus Christ is the Father and the Son. And Jesus Christ is in you. The Father and the Son is in you. Or you couldn't even breathe. For that breath is spirit. So the Father is in man. And by entering man, man became a living soul. But not yet a life-giving spirit. When he awakens, is now a life-giving spirit. So in him was life. And the purpose of the mission of the Son is that they may have life and have it abundantly. So the being in man will one day awaken as the man in whom now he is buried and he is that being.